came to New Zealand as a refugee from Sudan and when he was only six years old with his grandmother. So it's great to see people making something of their lives when they've come from really difficult circumstances. But even as a young boy, he carries dreams as big as the ocean that brought him here. Absolute magic on the pitch. Goals, assists, the whole nine yards. Akol is not just participating, he's dominating. This is what the beautiful game is all about. Oh! What a shot by Manny Akol. Guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the How to Become a Pro Footballer podcast. This is our fifth in-person podcast. This is our 109th podcast. Today we got my guy Manny coming on, originally from South Sudan, grew up in New Zealand. Now he's playing in Latvia. We met the other day, a couple weeks ago. I noticed he was good friends and a teammate of a guy we had on the podcast, William Akiel. So just naturally I went up to him. And yeah, want to hear about his journey. I know you guys are going to learn a lot. So without further ado, yeah, if you just introduce yourself to the audience and uh, we'll get going. Hey guys, uh, so I'm Manny, you know, born in South Sudan, but grew up in New Zealand. Um, and here I am playing football in Latvia. Um, yes. What position? How old are you? So I'm 23. I play uh, center defensive midfielder. Yes, for FK Alda and for the South Sudan national team. Awesome, brother. Awesome. Yeah, so if you could just take us through, you know, your, your journey to become a pro footballer. Uh, it's the main reason I have the podcast. I think a lot of people nowadays, they see, you know, on, on social media, they see a lot of the shiny things. They see the Rolexes, the Ferraris, the Lambos, but we both know there's tons of highs and lows in this game. Yes. And uh, unfortunately, we don't all get paid that amount of money right now. So right. It's, it's a grind and it's, it's a process to get there. Yeah, Manny, so if you could just take us through your journey uh, up into you know, signing your first pro contract. Yeah, like when did you start playing? How old were you? Where did you start playing? And how did you fall in love with the game? Because I think that's the most important. I think a lot of people nowadays are pressed by people, but I think you know, we both know you got to always go back to the why and the love for the game. Right. Yeah, so I started playing football uh, in New Zealand. Um, in 2006, at the age of six, um, I played for like a small local club, a Nana soccer club. Um, I played there until the age of like 14. And then I went to high school, St. Bernard's, and I played for the high school team um, for like a couple of years. And then I joined like a club under 17 side, uh, Lower Hutt. So I was there for like a season, I think at Lower Hutt. Um, yeah, then I went to another club, Wellington Olympic. So the New Zealand guys would know that. So I was there for a bit, and then uh, in New Zealand we have like uh, one professional club, mm -hmm. the Wellington Phoenix. So I joined the national side, like the national league side in 2017. Uh, yeah, that was very hard because like obviously I've never played at that level before. So like I struggled a bit and then I didn't like really enjoy like football at that moment because it was just, it was very hard, you know. Mm. So then I decided to like just, I don't know, like take like a couple of months off and just work and I just relaxed a bit from football. How old were you when you took that time off? Uh, 17. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I took some time off, for like, yeah, like a few months. And then yeah. I went back to, uh, I went back to Wellington Olympic, the previous club. Uh, and I had a very good relationship with Stu Jacobs and James Prosser, who were the coaches mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. then. So James had like a, he's from America, he's from Ohio. Yeah. So he had like a, a project of sending like players to, University in the States. Okay. Yeah, so like we had like a showcase like January 2000 and 2018, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. We had like a showcase. In New Zealand. Yeah, in New okay. Zealand. So a few like uh, universities from America came down and like took us, some, uh, took us through some training sessions and stuff like that. Uh, and I did like pretty well. Um, yeah, so I got like offered a scholarship to go to the States. Nice. For, for the end of 2018. So yeah, so we took that. Uh, went there for like uh, six months. It didn't really work out. Yeah. What's, um, what school was that? I went to Rio Grande, which was like a yeah, NA. Yeah. That's a, was that a D2 or NAI? NAIA. Okay. Good level there, yeah? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, and like you had to study as well. And like growing up, I wasn't really into school 
Yeah, yeah. yeah so I found, Neither were most of us. <laughs> I found it very difficult. Um, yeah, so then I dropped out. Then I wanted to focus on football, uh, like more, you know, without like studying and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I joined like a New Zealand club as well, uh, Wellington United. Mm. So one of the guys, uh, Rafa, he's the coach. He took me to Belgium for like a trial um, at KV Mechelen. So I went there, they didn't really work out. I went to France and played for like a, a French team mm. over there. So I went and played there for a bit. Like, what league was that? Uh, it was like, no, it wasn't a good league. It was just like more of like just social. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. yeah, just get some minutes, yeah. Yeah, so I went there, played there. Then I went to Australia to try like play in the NPL, I think two mm-hmm. at that mm-hmm. time, like mm-hmm. yeah, 2020. And then COVID happened. Mm. Yeah, so like the season got cancelled. Um, so I went back to New Zealand. It was a lot of travelling back and forth from New Zealand to Australia during COVID because uh, I wasn't too sure if the season would like go on yeah. or like wouldn't go on. Yeah. So then um, fast, like, yeah, fast forward, uh, end of 2020, I got caught up to the national team for South Sudan. Nice. Um, yeah, so I went there into South Sudan, played a few games. How did that look come about? Uh, right, so I knew one guy from uh, Australia who was previously in the national team, uh, Matiang. Mm-hmm. So he was close with the coach. So he messaged the coach for me, actually. Love that. Yeah, which is like yeah. cool. Yeah. And the coach got in, uh, got in touch with me. And then, yeah, I went, I went to South Sudan, had like a training camp there. And then the coach liked me, you know, and then nice. we played a couple of games against Uganda. Yeah, and then like uh, at that moment, like I realized that like, uh, that it was possible to like, uh, like be professional or like play at a higher level, like just playing against like, like just high class players just uh, motivated me mm-hmm. to like actually give football like a big try. Mm-hmm. Yeah, brother. So like you said, you know, you went to join a pretty good side in New Zealand, competitive level, like you said, uh, you never had been competing at that level. You saw how hard it was. What brought you there? And then, you know, you said you took a little bit of a break. Why did you, you know, decide to take that break? Because I, I get a lot of messages from young footballers who say they feel burnt out or, you know, should I take a break? What made you actually want to go through with that? Yes, yeah, so it was difficult, like, because uh, I wasn't playing and, um, and like, we weren't getting paid as well, like the younger guys, you know? So obviously, like, uh, I just want to just, and I had a girlfriend at the time as well, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a girlfriend. Uh-oh. So obviously I wanted it's to like, easy. yes, I wanted to like buy her stuff and, you know, like make her happy. Um, yeah, so then I just, I don't know, I just wanted to work, you know, to earn some money, to like buy her stuff and just make her happy, you know? Yeah, so that was, a reason, that was like part of the reason why, mm. Um, mm. yeah, I wanted to stop playing like, yeah, for a little bit. Mm. You, you look back on that because that's also a question that, that's very interesting as well, you know. As a footballer, you know, we, we have a very discipline schedule you know we can't go out often maybe once a week max we can't do the things that typical other guys can do Mm -hmm. and some girls i think the right girls will find that attractive they find ambition discipline hard work attractive the wrong girls try to sway you and push you in the wrong direction trust me i've had that experience you know and i realize now at 29 what i want you know what i mean Mm -hmm. And they want you to go out with them and their friends. They want you to drink, but you might have training in the morning. Uh, they want you to go out to these late nights. But looking back on that experience at 17, do you regret taking some time off for this girl? Or do you think you wanted to do that? And did you, or was it, was it like a learning experience? Like this was a little bit of a mistake, a failure, not a failure, but a mistake. You wish you didn't do that, or did you feel like it helped you in your learning process now at 23 when deciding if you, you want to get serious with a woman or not, you know, at your level? Yeah, no, I don't regret it because, like, I liked her a lot, you know? Uh, and, like, regrets, I don't really regret anything in life because, like, that shapes me, like, today, you know? Like, uh, those regrets or those mistakes or those experiences, uh, that's what made me, you know, who I am today. Yeah. So I don't really regret that at all. Um, yeah, so I'm just, I don't know, I'm thankful for like that experience that I had. Yeah, so I don't, yeah, I don't regret it. For sure, yeah, so, you know, na- now going back, you know, taking us back to now, you know, if, if, if you're interested in a girl, she's interested in you, how do you, 
how do you find the right girl for yourself? Because, you know, obviously, you know, it's important to, to pick the right one. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like I said before, you can have one who, who takes you to the next level or takes you down a level. So, mm -hmm. so, so what are your thoughts on that, especially for young footballers watching, getting into the, the dating scene? Yeah, like it's, it's hard to like yeah. find the right girl because you don't know like the intentions or like you just don't know, you know? Um, so obviously like when I'm looking for a girl, that's a hard question, man. It's a very hard question. <laughs> yeah. Not many of us can answer, man, trust me. But yeah, I, I guess you, you know, I guess you learn from your experiences, you know what I mean? You know, because for me, you know, living in, in many countries, I've seen that relationship dynamics and how women and men act together are, are you know, different in every country. So I think, I think that's part of it. Uh, like, you know, for example, in Latvia, it's much different than Sweden. It's much different than the U.S. It's much different than Germany, you know, so it's, it's interesting. I think you learn a lot about, you know, human behavior. And, and then, like you said, it shapes you, you know, it, like, I, I like that you said that uh, you don't have any regrets and you learn from, from your mistakes and stuff like that. And you push forward. That's what we always say. So yeah, you know, moving off of that question, why did you decide that you wanted to make a move to the US? No, because uh, James Prosser, my mentor in New Zealand, like I trust him a lot, you know, um, and he thought like that was the best thing for me yeah, to go to yeah, the US, yeah, study yeah. and play football, you know? And potentially get drafted so obviously yeah i believed in them and then yeah we made the move but obviously you know like not everything works out yeah so that didn't work out but yeah it doesn't matter can, can you describe your experience you know because we have a lot of european listeners we have a lot of american listeners uh your experience in the u.s being you know a student athlete and and like you said the the like they can entice you with a lot of these scholarships and this money to study for free but then you end up, like if you actually want to be a very serious footballer, they push you to be more of a student first before an athlete. Right. So like, w what was your experience going there? Was it what you expected? Was it, was it different? Did you, you know, enjoy it? What, what was your overall experience there? It was very different. Um, yeah, very, very different. Like, um, like the studies were hard. Like I didn't think like I had to study that much because like uh, all I thought was just football, football, football when I got there. Um, but it was like a little bit of the opposite, uh, opposite, like just study, study, study. And it was just, it was draining. It was, I found it very difficult. Um, no schools, like schools, not for everyone. Yep. Like it wasn't for me. Um, yeah, obviously like I met like a, like I met like cool guys there as well, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so that's cool. But like, yeah, it was not the best experience, but it's okay. Mm -hmm. What would you rate the level? What would you compare it to? Like a football level? Football level, yeah. Right. Um, no, it's a good level. Um, it's like it's physical, it's fast, and like a lot of long balls, and just yeah, stuff like that. Um, whereas here in Europe, it's more like uh, like position. Mm. Yeah, like the club that I'm at uh, right now, anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the level here is is higher because it's yeah, professional. Of yeah, of course, yeah. of course. Yeah. So, how was your experience? I mean, getting getting called into to the you know Sudanese national team. How how was that? Must have been. Uh, pretty crazy experience and, and it's nothing like playing for your country you know yeah i was very proud because like uh, i lived there like 2006 at yeah. a young at a young age with my grandmother mm. so uh, my family is still in africa mm -hmm. and like um so it was just you know it was like the best feeling ever to like represent your country mm. and like, to play for like millions of people and just to try like bring joy to their faces you know 100%. um yeah that's probably like the best moment of my like footballing career so far oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, just, it was special. What, what was the level going into camp? Uh, how, how was the level there? No, the level was good. Uh, so it was like, no, so it was during like COVID. Mm. So I hadn't done like mini trainings because um, we were just always in lockdown. Mm. So I struggled a bit like with the fitness, um, like the fitness runnings and stuff like that. Uh, but the coach, like uh, he believed in me, you know, he saw something in me. So he kept on like pushing me every single day and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, yeah, so yeah, so that was good, and then we played like uh, against Uganda, and I started both games. Wow! Like for like my debut, which wow. is yeah, it was awesome. Like, yeah, I wasn't thinking I'd start because it was my first time in the camp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was pretty cool. W were you were you nervous at all? Yeah, very nervous, yeah, yeah. very very nervous. With that being said, I mean that that's also a huge question I get. You know, uh, we get in the DMs from from young footballers. And it's, it's something, you know, that's, that's natural as a footballer going into to big games, you know, first experiences with things. You get nervous, you get anxious. It's a natural feeling. 
how do you deal with those things? How do you deal with being nervous before games? You sort of just like, I don't know, just talk to yourself in your head. Uh, like, just believe in yourself and just, like, confidence comes from, like, preparation. Like, if you prepared, if you prepared well, train well, eat, sleep, if you do, like, all the right things, that like will give you like confidence uh going into the game yeah like it's normal to be nervous like it just means that you care and you you know want to do well yeah but yeah yeah dude that, that, that's per that's a perfect answer man i mean it's you know words that would come right out of my mouth like that's why i i try to do what i do and promote you know healthy lifestyle and like a holistic approach to footballers because like you said you know if you're well prepared when you step on the pitch for the weekend you know that you've done everything you can, you know what I mean? And like, I think you, people get nervous when they, they slack, you know what I mean? And they don't do the right things and they take off when they shouldn't have taken off. So yeah, I completely agree. I think that's, that's the importance of taking care of yourself on and off the field and, you know, doing the game analysis, doing those little things to get you to the next level. So, uh, so after, you know, the trip to the Sudanese national team, that was 2020, where'd you make your move next? In 2020, so I went back, yes, yeah, so I went back to New Zealand and played for a national league team, Hawks Bay. Um, yeah, I think I played like maybe like six games mm -hmm. because it was like towards the end of the, uh, that season. So I played like six games. Mm -hmm. um, and then 2021 season started. So I went back to that, uh, to the Wellington Phoenix, like okay. Academy. Okay. Um, yeah, so I went and played for the reserves um, for the 2021 season. Mm. And then played there. And then I trained with the first team, uh, like the A-League club okay. for like a few months. Um, and I didn't get a first team contract. I don't even know Steven Taylor. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Right. So, he, yeah, so I read a bit about your stuff before, uh, okay. of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he's like the. So he was the captain of the Wellington Phoenix. So uh, he decided to, I don't know, like retire from professional football. I think. So he went and coached over in Dubai. Uh, so him and my agent at the time, Graham, uh, like organized for me to go over there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I went over there. Yeah, I went over there. The end of two thousand and twenty-one, early two thousand and twenty-two. Yeah. And then, yeah, we're doing preseason, and then we had a game, a uh, friendly game against Riga FC. Oh, wow. And then I played uh, pretty well, and then Riga FC brought me over to the club that I'm at now. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, let's go back real quick. I mean, just for, for the listeners that don't know, Wellington Phoenix is in the, they play in the A-League, in the Australian League. That's yeah. the only, is that the only full professional team in New Zealand? Yeah. Okay, okay. And how, how, how would you compare the level there right now to, to Aura where you're at? Uh, it's, it's better, I think. Wow, yeah, it's better. Yeah, but yeah, it's better. But it's, like Aura is in Europe. And like when you're in Europe, like uh, there's many, many clubs around, you know? Mm -hmm. So like the window is a lot bigger to like make your next move, stuff like that. 100%. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I mean, I just think I always tell people in the U.S. and and... and that like the mobility, I would say the mobility within Europe to move through the leagues is much better. You know what I mean? Like you don't like, you know, you were, you were playing for a club in Dubai and you have a friendly club in Europe. Like you don't know what can happen, you know? And uh, yeah, I mean, I think also it's, how did you build, let's, how did you build that relationship with Steven Taylor? Because obviously he regarded you as, as, as a, probably a top player and, and probably a disciplined player and a great attitude. How, how did you build that, you know? Like the relationship in, in New Zealand, like with them or? Yeah, because, you know, I just, the reason I asked that question, because I want to point out to youngsters, like everyone always asks how to build a better network, how to get connections. And I think the main thing is, uh, you correct me if I'm wrong, is like you treat yourself like a professional on and off the field. And if, if that person is a professional like Steven Taylor and they notice disciplined individuals, they align with those people, you know? So, so what I'm saying is like, how did you build like a, a good persona in his head that he wanted to bring you over to his new club right maybe uh like he saw me every day uh like at trainings and like um so maybe he saw like i had a good body language to train to work uh the way i treat others i just always happy smiling and like that attracts like uh people you know to like get to know you or like want to do something for you mm -hmm. uh yeah so i think he saw something in me um and just wanted to like help me um, yeah, when he found out that I wasn't going to get a first team contract. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you play with Sohil Var over there? Who? Sohil Var? No. No, you don't know him? Okay, yeah, because he, he was at Gulf United. Maybe you left before he came. Uh, uh, Canadian kid. But um, yeah, man, I mean, so, so how long were you at Gulf United? How was that experience? I was there for like three weeks. Yeah? Wow, yeah. wow. And how was the level there? No, the level was good. Yeah? Yeah, it was good. Very hot, huh? 
Very hot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but I like playing in you know in hot weather more yeah. than yeah more than cold. For sure. How was the lifestyle in Dubai? No, it was okay. You know, like I was there for three weeks. So I didn't really like do too much. I was just every day training. Yeah. Like yeah. with the boys yeah. chilling. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, but it was good. Like, yeah, we went to like Dubai more, Bush Khalifa to like mm -hmm. uh, look around and stuff. The facilities are unreal. Uh, yeah, golf, yeah, it's very good. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, um, you know, if you could take us through a bit about yourself, you know, what would you say like your main strengths are as a player? Like, what makes you stand out in the middle of the pitch right. besides your height? Uh, yeah. Probably like, like my defense, like my defensive like work rate. Um, like I like, you know, high challenges, high tackles, stuff like that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how to describe myself. You know, yeah, like I, I don't you. really. Let's, how about this? Take take us back to the game against Riga. You know, uh, what do you yeah. think that? What do you think they saw in you? Yeah, like I was really aggressive in that game because uh, I wanted to like prove a point, yeah. and I wanted to like really test myself against these European clubs. Um, yeah, so I was, I was just tackling a lot, like being aggressive, uh, winning my challenges, winning hitters just moving the ball like yeah I had a good game as a defensive mid you know um, are there any any players you get inspiration from do you do you try to mirror your game uh, off of any specific players or just you know you like your own style like you, you did you have any idols growing up uh, as a defensive mid uh, like I had no like idol in my position but like obviously Ronaldinho Ronaldo yeah. Neymar like I love those guys you know but like the stuff they do like I cannot I cannot do that in my yeah. position because if I lose the ball, yeah, yeah, like uh, the other team will score or whatever. For sure. Yeah, so I didn't really idolize any mid like any uh, defensive midfielders. Yeah. Growing up, if there are any like you know defensive midfielders, center mids out there watching, you have any like specific tips for them? You know, to to get noticed. You know, through through games like this or get get that opportunity. What, what's your overall advice for midfielders? Just do, I don't know, do the simple things right. Uh, if you like make a mistake, like don't be afraid to get on the ball. Uh, like again, you know, just get on the ball, move the ball. Just, I don't know, just play hard, I guess. For sure. Very good statement because I think especially when you're younger, you know, you make mistakes, you start to shy away from the ball. Right. But like if you, if you make a couple mistakes and you want to keep, you keep asking for the ball, the, even if you lost it, the teammates still have the confidence in you. The coach still has the confidence in you. So, yeah, I think that that's a very good point. How about, uh, let's take us back to, to your childhood when you, when you were growing up and stuff. Did you do any individual work to improve your technique? Did you do any physical work? You know, how, how did you look at your own individual self outside of team training? Like, we played, like, a lot of, uh, like, after-school football, like, uh, like, street football. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. like, uh, there was, like, a big group of us that would go to, like, the park, like Nine Eye Park, and just play for like hours of hours, yeah. like of just playing, you know. Yeah. And uh, I felt like that, like helped me a lot. Yeah, like I really enjoyed that time. And like now, it's like I don't know if I see any kids like doing that, like after school and stuff. But street football was like, yeah, that was really like extra training mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. what, what about from a physical pers perspective? No, I don't think so. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, if you could just take us through right now, playing it out, a typical day in the life. What time you wake up, uh, what time you have breakfast, what you have for breakfast. Just, I, I like to give young footballers watching a practical sense of how you live a day in your life. I mean, I'm sure they've heard it a lot. It's very basic routine, discipline, but yeah, just walk us through, you know, typical day. Right, so usually like, uh, like we have training like pretty much every single day. Uh, so 9.20 is when I leave uh, my apartment. So I usually like wake up like an hour before that, um, wake up. I drink like as much water as I can in the morning. Like that's the first thing I do. Uh, I drink like a bottle of water. Sparkling or still? No, just normal water still. Ah, man. Well, you like sparkling water? Yeah, but I'll spark get some more. <laughs> yeah, just drink a bottle of water and then have like uh, almond milk with uh, like oats nice. like in the morning. Nice. Have that, have like banana, and then like obviously have a shower, brush my teeth, all of that. Yeah. And then get picked up. At like yeah 9 20 and then go mm -hmm. down to training mm -hmm. uh we get there like mm, like 35 40 minutes uh yeah, before training starts and then we do activation yeah yeah, yeah. yeah for like 15 minutes 20 minutes um and then like every like second day maybe we'll do like a gym uh like a gym exercise like core or like mobility in the gym 
and stuff like that and then yeah go down to training usually like 60 minutes to like 75 minutes every single day mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then after that uh okay uh there's lunch like at uh a training like uh after training okay so we have lunch like pasta chicken nice. rice nice yeah salads and stuff mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so then training will be done shower go home i like to take a nap mm. like straight after training for yeah. like an hour yeah after that yeah wake up relax go on my phone mm -hmm. and then sometimes i will go to the gym like mm -hmm. depending like mm -hmm. how hard depending on how how hard training was that day yeah yeah you're a my fitness guy huh? mm -hmm. a lot of nice things huh? <laughs> <laughs> no i'll go there to work out <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah okay okay uh yeah yeah, yeah. No, nice sauna in there and everything how how's the vibe at the training how are the guys and everything like no the guys are cool yeah, uh, yeah. very funny yeah uh, obviously there's a lot of africans yeah uh there's a few uh south americans as well nice and nice. latvians and german yeah. croatian yeah. yeah that's good man that's good nice. good mix yeah, yeah yeah man i always i always tell people like you know africans you know really are always happy always smiling always grateful it's good good to be around them you know we, we got a couple africans on our team as well yeah man i mean so so you know what time you usually go to sleep what, what time what do you usually have for dinner right so for dinner um so i don't really cook because i cooked one time and i got really sick really? uh yeah so there's like uh yeah it's bad yeah. so there's like one restaurant uh man i want to give them a shout out but i don't even know the name where is it at i might uh, know wait let me get out real quick <laughs> yeah. well i've never been there yeah but it's really good you know yeah, so yeah. i go there like yeah pretty much every day what is it called sedonia sedonia gastro pub yeah, nice. they, do they like, better give you a discount for this shout out <laughs> they do like pastas uh rice noodles beef like everything nice you know yeah so i'll go there and out. eat you know i eat like at eight okay i have dinner like pretty late i think okay. yeah like eight now i go to bed gosh it's very late maybe <laughs> like like 1 30 2 a.m <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah which is not oh, good you're a late night out yeah uh, what are you doing just chilling watch yeah. watching movies. just on my phone yeah, just yeah, yeah. yeah just relaxing for sure for sure so so outside of football what do you like to do on your off days i usually just like i go to that coffee shop you know mm -hmm. and just relax and just like clear my head um walk around go to like mall like do some shopping like i don't really like to stay inside like my apartment you know because yeah, yeah, yeah. like thoughts just start coming into your head yeah so i yeah. like to go out and just yeah relax 100%. go to like coffee shop shopping yeah 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 any, any specific things you like to do for recovery, ice bath, sauna? Right, yeah, I go to the sauna like a bit as well. Um, sauna, go on the bike nice, maybe nice. for like 30 minutes, uh, stretch. So yeah, brother, nice little break. Nice little coffee break, sparkling water break. Yeah, I just wanted to get into it. Uh, I don't think it's a very, let's say it's a taboo subject. Not a lot of people like to talk about it, but like on this podcast, I like to bring out the truth and everything because I think that's how we learn as footballers and as humans and you know I asked you before you know about Latvia and what you thought and obviously you know I don't see from your perspective everyone has their own set of eyes you know what has been your overall thought living here their overall vibe um, you know day-to-day -day social life because I think that's very important as a footballer as well you know obviously you got to pick the right friends to hang out with most of them are your, are your teammates um, how, do, how do you see that the day-to-day -day? right so um so it's like it's challenging like some days you know um obviously like i think the country is like it's a very small country and i don't know if it's like uh, really like open like to the world um because not like a lot of like people coming to this country like i had no idea what Latvia was before i even came here yeah yeah so obviously like me being uh from africa and being you know black mm -hmm. uh like people uh look at me like a little different you know because yeah. obviously like they don't see uh people that look like me like each day every day or whatever like they see uh they see us like on the tv and stuff yeah so it's like unusual yeah. uh, i think for them you know um so that's been challenging yeah. uh yeah i'm sorry to hear that man i mean it's, it's disappointing um you know, have there been any specific instances that you've just been like surprised and like, what's your response to that? It must be be tough mentally, you know? Right. Yeah. So like, obviously, like every day, uh, like most days, you know, some people will come up to me and 
just say how dark I am, you know, like I'm very black, like they've never seen somebody like me and stuff like that, you know, which is like, it's not, yeah. yeah, it's frustrating, you know, like I get angry, but like I'm a professional football player, you know, yeah. as well. So I can't like, uh, like react too much, you know, because it's not yeah. going to look good yeah. on me or my club, you know. Yeah. So obviously, you know, like I say like a few words and stuff and then that's that. But like, yeah. like every single time, you know, it's uh, like... Yeah, it's not, no, it's not good. Like, I don't want to say, like, I'm used to it because it's happened, like, so much. Yeah. But, like, it's just I can't do anything, like, yeah. about it, really, you know. So I have to, like, uh, yeah, not accept it, but, like, obviously I'll say something, you know. Yeah. And then just, yeah, just yeah, let yeah. it be and, like, try not think about it too much. 100%. Have you noticed that in other countries or has it been more, like, obvious and pertinent here? No, no, just here. Wow. Yeah, like, obviously in America, no, because obviously there's so many Africans, yeah. like, black people there yeah. as well. In yeah. New Zealand, no, in Australia, no, Belgium, no, like no other country wow. apart from here, you know, and yeah. like, uh, it's which is, yeah, it's just surprising for me, you know, because I, yeah. it's 2023, you know, I didn't think like this was like still around. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, I've seen that as well, man. Like, you know, people still hold the pat their behaviors from, you know, that they've learned from others, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's sad. And nowadays, you know, there's, there's, media swaying one person to the other side and no one can think for themselves nowadays you know right. what i mean so it's it, it's sad you know but yeah i mean you know obviously you talked about also one incident uh i don't know if you want to talk about any specific teams or anything like that but you said you 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 underwent an incident during during a match there was some racism yeah obviously it was like uh like a couple months ago i think you know we played uh two comes and then one guy just you know was just being racist you know which is unbelievable like uh because he's a football player like he knows that there's yeah. black people in football yeah. you know like yeah. he knows that that's not okay like he knows yeah. that racism is not okay you know like yeah which is so like heartbreaking you know because like the sport should just bring everybody together and stuff like that 100%. and then what made it worse was like the riff gave him gave him like a yellow card for that you know and like yeah and like nobody really like uh, nobody from his club or the federation of Latvia didn't really like take any actions of that, you know, oh, which is... Oh, yeah. did, did you report it to your club and they, did they yes, take any action or...? Yes, uh, my club did, you know, but like, yeah, that was all, you know, and like, it's just, it's just sad, it's just sad that like the Federation didn't like do anything yeah. about it because then yeah. it makes it seem like it's okay, you know, 100%. which is, yeah, which is not. Yeah. Like a yellow card, like this. Yeah, yeah. And I got a yellow card for reacting as well. No way. Yeah. No way. Right. And, and you told the ref what happened? Yes. Like the ref, I told the ref everything. And the guy was, uh, he was admitting, you know, as well. And he was apologizing, saying, oh, it was in the moment, you know. And this, so the ref knew about it, you yeah. know. And then, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we see it in, 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 in the top clubs. But, yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's, it's not an easy thing. I mean, you know, pe what about advice for, you know, people who go through that? You know, I mean, it's it's not easy. Like you said, you get angry, but I think the most important thing, like you said, is you keep a calm head and a cool head because obviously I'm sure if someone says that to you, you just want to crack them in the face and really right. show them that it's not right. But as you said, I think as a professional footballer, it's very well said, you know, you have to act like a pro on and off the pitch. So what's your advice to people going through that you know what i mean just uh yes obviously everybody like reacts differently you know yeah. so um i would just say just like care about it but uh don't let it like bother you just you know like you're better than that you're better than that person you know like just yes i don't know because everyone acts like differently yeah um, sure. yeah yeah i would just say just I don't know, just yeah. like, it's not okay, but I don't know. Like I have no advice for them because it's... Yeah, I mean, I think like the best advice is to listen to what you said, just keep a cool head, move on, you know? And then, uh, you know, just watch out, you know, watch yourself with these people. But yeah, man, let's move off, off of the subject. You know, uh, thanks for sharing that. I think it's going to be very helpful for people. Uh, I want to take us back to the, to, the, to the trial in Belgium. How did that go? How was that, how was that experience? Was that your first trial in Europe? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. I was really nervous because, yeah. um, yes, it was my first trial um, in Europe. So I was, yeah, so I was, no, I was training with the, like, the academy, like the under-21s, like under I think. Mm -hmm. 
but I was there with a player from New Zealand as well. Oh, okay. So we were there traveling together, which like made everything easier and just more fun, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so obviously it was, it was difficult. Uh, like I didn't struggle, but like um, maybe they wanted me to be like the best uh, player in the academy because yeah. I was coming from like, uh, like from a foreign country. For sure. So if they were to use like uh, their foreign like sport, it needs to be like a top, top player you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so then yeah so that didn't really work out but it was good though you know like the coach was nice you know he said I'm a good player to like keep going mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. that was really nice with him what did you notice about the level over there compared to New Zealand and, and Australia like how they regarded football what was your what, what did you observe there like all of them were like real professional even though they're like academy players you know like they would eat right drink water like every, and they just look professional like yeah, coming in uh, to trainings and stuff. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And they were like all technical as well, like very technical. Yeah. Like yeah. good touches, passing, just all of that, you know. Like you can see that uh, that they started playing football at a young, at a very young age. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so those players were good. Any specific tips that you have for players when going on trial? Any specific advice? You know, like you said before, it's, this is your advice from your perspective, from your own eyes from you as a player and your experiences. So maybe players can take it on board, they can try it out and see if it works, and then maybe for other players it won't work. So from your, from your perspective, what, what's some advice for players going on trial? Yeah, so what I would say is, uh, like when you go, for example, like uh, to the changing rooms, like shake everyone's hands, be nice, be polite, yeah. have manners, um, and like maybe like when training is done, like pick up the coins, you know, make it easier for the so like the managers, you know, like the kid, uh, the team managers and stuff. Yeah, just helping out like in any way you can and just, yeah. And then when you're playing, uh, try to keep it simple. Like um, don't start doing like silly tricks and stuff like that, you know, because I don't know, may no, maybe it might seem arrogant or not, but just, yeah, just play it simple. Uh, like I'm a midfielder, so I would, you know, play it simple. Uh, try, try like, I don't know, mm -hmm. like, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, based off of what you said, I could chime in. I mean, one of the greatest quotes that I heard from a, from one of these directors in in New York, Maximilian Mansfield, if you're listening, he was, he played in Germany, has a lot of players in Germany and throughout Europe, and he said something very interesting. When you're on trial, when you're going to a new place, everyone thinks that they need to stand out. But I think what you should do in the beginning, the first couple of days, is first you fit in. You fit into the culture. Once they like see that like you're friendly with the guys, you're good with the guys, people like you, then you can start showing your qualities, you know, like your strengths and you can start showing your standout qualities. Mm -hmm. Obviously depending on your position. Um, obviously it's different f from a striker and a winger compared to a center back or a defensive midfielder. So I think the goal in the beginning is to first fit into the culture, fit into the system, see what the coach wants, see the role he wants his, for example, his defensive midfielder to play and then try to emulate that, you know? And then I, I think it's the same thing, you know, either the, the, the club likes you or they don't. And, and you, all, you just have to look yourself in the mirror at the end of the day and you say, I gave it my all. And yes. if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Oh, that's perfect, bro. But you know like a lot of things and you like know how to like uh, say it as well. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you know a lot and you know how to say it as well. Whereas me, I like, I don't know, I struggle to like say it. Yeah, I mean, bro, bro, honestly, like I've been doing this for seven years, man, seven, eight years, like tons of like research on this. Um, yeah, I mean, you could ask, you could ask Adam, you know, I mean, he like when we when we lived together, you know, he always said like, you don't know, he doesn't know how I do it and stuff like that. And then once he started doing it, it's just like every anything like reps, 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 practice, and then boom, you know, and it's this for me, this is, you know, I've told my team and everything and like people that work for me that like this is my favorite thing to do like i love conversations you know what i mean i love like learning about people like their why because everyone has their own journey you know what i mean and i can learn off of everyone you know what i mean so no matter who they are no matter where they come it's like i think that's what that life is all about like those conversations that you go deep into you could learn off of each other help each other out and I think that's that's the overall goal, you know what I mean? That's why I have this stuff, and that's why podcasting is becoming more popular, because you could dive into the human, you know what I mean? And you could learn directly off of their experiences and, and their knowledge and perspective. Right. Yeah. But you're a genius, man. <laughs> nah, not really. I'm, I'm trying to get there. I'm trying to get there. But yeah, brother, I mean, uh, as we get towards the end of the podcast, so as we get towards the end of the podcast, I just want to ask you some quick-fire questions. 
First off, who's the best player you ever played against? Um, I would say either Bertrand Traore, uh, who plays for Aston Villa at the yeah. moment, and um, I think his name is like uh, Bosima. He plays for, uh, I think, Tottenham. Okay. I don't know if I said his name correctly. Okay. Yeah, he's good. And then there's another, but I don't know this guy's name. He plays for, uh, I think, Monaco in the French League. Uh -huh. He plays midfield. Um, okay. He's from Mali. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how to say his name, but this guy was a beast. Wow. Where would you play against these guys? National team? Yeah, mm -hmm. for South Sudan. What, what do you what do you notice about these guys? Like for example, Traore. Like what's what's something you know different about him? Right. Um, he just got so much flair and like he's tricky. You know, uh, he just nah. I don't know how to explain it. You know, he's just he's very good. He's a baller. Yeah. yeah. How about who, who's the best player you ever played with? Played with? I don't know. Maybe you want to give me your boy some shout outs? Uh, <laughs> nah, cause, nah, cause if I give like one person like you know yeah, a shout out, yeah, then yeah. you know. All right, top three, top, top three. three. Let's make it easy. Top three. Maybe like Valentino for the national team. Mm -hmm. Give him a shout out. Uh, Machop. Mm -hmm. uh, Machop. Uh, and I would say Tito Okello and Toa and CJ. Just everyone, yeah. all of them. <laughs> yeah, 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 I can't like, yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, so interesting question. If you were on death row and you had your last meal, what are you, what are you eating? My last meal? Yeah, last meal. You gotta, it's got to be a couple courses. Right. Appetizer, what are you drinking? What, what are you eating? What, what's for dessert? Gosh. Yeah. Probably like Big Mac combo. Yeah. Like Big Mac wow. without, uh, without lettuce, uh, fries, yeah. light fries. Any uh, sauce with that, with the fries? Nah, nah no yeah. sauce. Yeah. Uh, with Fanta. Okay. I have that. Uh, probably have, uh, I'd have pizza as well, like margarita pizza. Yeah have that um probably like candy like lollies you know like yeah, gummy yeah. beers and stuff like that <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah just like just yeah. all the bad food you know that i can't eat like every yeah. single day yeah yeah, yeah. so is, is that what you're eating for your cheat meals uh yeah i have mcdonald's like uh maybe like once every like two weeks three weeks mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. not yeah i don't really yeah. eat too bad yeah 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 but i love it though <laughs> yeah what about african food that's african food? a high level huh? uh, Yes. Not into it, huh? No, no, I love uh, it, I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Anjera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, I've heard about that. Anjera and like all the sauces and soups and stuff yeah, and yeah, like yeah. egg, meat. Yeah. yeah, that's delicious. Yeah, one of the guys who played for us uh, a couple months ago was from Nigeria and he told me about Anjera. He's like, bro, it just gives you so much power, you know yes. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, there's some, obviously, you know, like, yeah, there's something in these African foods because <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. No, African food is good, but nah, like for the cheap meal, like yeah. I have like, you know, yeah. McDonald's, pizza, mm -hmm. just all that bad food mm -hmm. you know, for my last meal. For sure. What about top three, let's start with vacation destinations that you want to check out, countries? I mean, I'm not really like a traveler, you know, I don't really, yeah, but if I was to go somewhere, everything is paid for, flights, hotels, everything is booked, I'd yeah. probably want to go to like, maybe like Bali. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I want to see that. Yeah. Maybe Hawaii. That's a good yeah. call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why and one more. Maybe like Chicago in America. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's a good call. That's a good call. With that being said, what was your overall thoughts of the U.S.? How, how did you like America? How did you like the people? What was your experience there? No, America was good. Like, yeah, I liked it. I liked the people. And like, uh, Pretty open-minded, not uh, yes. welcoming. Yeah, 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 that's what I tell people, man. Like, unfortunately, nowadays, man, like, even in Europe, like, Bro, like you tell people you're American, they just think right away you're stupid or something like that. You know <laughs> what I mean? It's like, come on, man. Like, go over there and see what's good. Yeah, every 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 country's got stupid people. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I'm no, glad yeah, to hear I like that. America. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I like that's America awesome. A lot. That's awesome. Yeah, I think I think it's also based on who you are and you're like you're an open-minded guy. You know what I mean? So, like you said here, there's a lot of closed-minded people. With that, how's uh, New Zealand, man? I want, I want to visit there. I hear it's fucking... New Zealand is beautiful. Yeah, and people are really nice, huh? Very nice. Kiwi is different very level. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about Australia? Uh, no, Australia is very nice as well, you know? Yeah. But their personality is a lot different uh, from New Zealanders, I think. In what way? Uh, like, I feel like New Zealanders are more, like, a little bit, like, reserved. They're not really... Uh, New Zealand, they're, like, polite. Like, very mm. polite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas Australians, they sort of just say, like what they're thinking and yeah. just stop, like they're just more outgoing yeah whereas yeah. new zealand's a little bit more reserved mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah where are the birds better <laughs> <laughs> that's important isn't it 
No, New Zealand. Yeah. yeah just because that's like that's my hood. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hear Australia the birds are different level, but I gotta I gotta visit both places, you know. Right. And let's say dream dream club to play for. Dream club? Manchester United. Absolutely, bro. That's your <laughs> team. Like, huh? Yeah. No, no, no. You know, Liverpool's my team. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, Man United. Yeah. That's yeah. Just, yeah, that'd be a dream. For sure. But yeah, man. Um, enjoyed, be, enjoyed you being on the pod. I Thank mean, you, first podcast ever for you. Yeah, I think you did well, I'm man. Nervous, you did well, bro. Nervous. Nah, you did well. Any, any last thoughts, last words for the audience? Um, any, any piece of advice? Any piece of advice? If you're a football player or just, I don't know, just enjoy life. Um, life is hard, but. It'll get better. Just, yeah, just be happy, enjoy life. That's what I can say. Manny, thanks for being on, brother. Appreciate you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in to the 109th podcast, the fifth in-person podcast, first in-person podcast in Latvia with a special guest. We thank him for sharing his journey. If you want to follow him, all the stuff will be below in the bio. You'll check him out. You see he's a very nice, humble, kind guy, and I'm sure he'll answer your questions. And any interested things, you could slide into his DM. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Hope you enjoyed that video. Make sure you click one of these two videos right here to stay up to date with the best football development channel here on YouTube. And most importantly, don't forget to drink your sparkling water. Deuces.